Hey, how's it going guys, it's Nate here. And Fallout 4 is a pretty big game. A massive map spanning across the city of Boston and beyond, a single player campaign that provides dozens of hours worth of entertainment, and doesn't cost a hundred bucks a year, plus more inhabitants than you could count. This game's got a lot going for it. But despite this already impressive size, Bethesda Game Studios had originally planned for Fallout 4 to be even bigger, and loaded with even more content that unfortunately needed to be removed before the game could hit shelves. Either because certain elements and assets weren't going to be finished in time, or just because the developers decided to change their direction. Various objects, characters, locations, and more were just, boop, like that, deleted from the title. So today, just because I find it so fascinating for some reason, we'll be using console commands, digging through some game files, and working with a few mods to bring back and examine some of what Fallout 4's developers removed. Sit back and relax as we dive right into five pieces of Fallout 4's most intriguing cut content. Note, this is actually my third video on this kind of thing, but the other two are like two years old now, so I'm not sure how I want to number this or include it in a series. Anyway, we'll figure that out later. Starting off, we're beginning this video with what appears to be a cut character whose very existence is both incredibly thought-provoking and also makes zero sense. Meet Game Master 3000 Mark II. He's an unused NPC that would have been associated with an unknown, likely also cut, side quest. Now, the thing about this character, as some of you are probably noticing, is that he's actually you. Well, sort of. His appearance is clearly modeled to resemble an aged version of Nate, the default male protagonist of the game. Sporting silver-white hair, somewhat paler skin, and clearly more wrinkles, this guy is us, just around 20 to 30-ish years in the future, depending on how far our genes get us. Furthermore, Game Master 3000 Mark II uses Nate's own voice files as well, in case the association wasn't obvious enough already. Though all he says is, yeah, and hmm? As stressed, we don't know much about Bethesda's plans for this NPC. All we know for sure is that his ID suggests he would have played a part in a side quest that currently doesn't exist, as his reference ID is associated with a side quest ID that currently leads to nothing. For a character this familiar, yet so mysterious, there's an infinite potential for speculation. With a suffix such as 3000 Mark II, I'm inclined to suspect that maybe this character had something to do with the Pip-Boy, as in Fallout 4, we and other Vault Dwellers the Soul Survivor interacts with use the Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV. Maybe this NPC had an association with a Mark II, or something. Another obvious potential explanation could have something to do with the Institute and synths. Wouldn't it be a really neat side quest if we had to track down a synth that was pretending to be us? There's a lot of things Bethesda could have decided to do here. Whatever role this corrupted version of ourselves was supposed to play, only the developers themselves know, and they, unfortunately, won't say. Next on our list, we have for you a cut location of all things and what probably would have been a pretty neat one at that. The Super Mutant Refugee Camp. So, we don't know a whole lot about this place. In fact, we know very little at all beyond the fact that Bethesda had this place on one of their maps during the game's development. You see, in June of 2018, Noclip, a production company and YouTube channel, did a documentary on the history of Bethesda Game Studios only a couple of months before the release of Fallout 76, which everybody loved and had absolutely zero complaints about. But in that documentary, a decent amount of time was spent discussing Fallout 4, and for an ever short few seconds, an image of one of Bethesda's earliest development maps for the game was displayed. It seems this map was created by the team just after they actually finished implementing the world's terrain, long before the world space itself and all of the buildings, trees and whatnot were finished. And in the map shot we get to see, somewhere right about on the edge of where the glowing sea begins, we can see a strange location, labeled as the Super Mutant Refugee Camp, that never appears in the game itself. Now, this map also bears some other location names and changes that differ from the final product, 
For instance, Volt 95 had its name changed to Volt 121, there's a new boating port on the Boston River, there's a number of these inconsistencies between this early dev map and what we see in the game. But again, I think this refugee camp is by far and away the most intriguing. If we head to the location in Fallout 4, there's no camp of any sorts. Instead, in its place, there's just a rather boring cave. Sadly, digging through the game's files reveals no references or left-behind assets. The B-roll playing on screen that you're watching right now is merely my best attempt at creating a super mutant camp in the glowing sea with settlement mode and some console commands. Since we don't know what the place would have looked like, this is just my best effort. Though a name like Super Mutant Refugee Camp is descriptive enough in my book. It's more than likely that this place would have served as some sort of village or community for displaced and probably friendly super mutants. Since it used the same map marker as buildable settlements, one presumably would have been able to take over this town and build here too. If the camp would have been hosting passive super mutants, maybe Virgil would have also been out here, rather than in his nearby cave instead. Overall, it's a really interesting concept Bethesda had going on here, and it's a shame we never saw it fully imagined. Before we move any further with this video, quick word from today's sponsor, the like button. Please, please, dear God, hit it if you enjoyed this video. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, moving forward. Coming in at number three, speaking of super mutants, I give you the Institute Centaur. So, in previous Fallout games, centaurs were quite a common type of mutant creature. They had an absolutely horrid appearance, mirroring a disfigured person with a bunch of feet hands. It was, ugh, just god-awful. They were most commonly found acting as companions to super mutants. And in New Vegas, a few super mutants even identified their centaurs as pets. Alas, despite making appearances in every other Fallout game before it, they were not featured in Fallout 4 for some reason. However, it seems that Bethesda did in fact, at least in some point in time, have plans to bring these characters back. As a stroll through Fallout 4's public concept art reveals one disturbing image. A grotesque red creature, with not one, not two, but four faces stands, or I don't know, maybe crouches down, on four or five legs, with another handful of limbs growing from its back. This disgusting beast is labeled as Centaur in the game's concept art, but for better or worse, never rears its ugly head, or heads, in the game itself. In fact, it's not even featured anywhere in the game's files either. You can't spawn it in with console commands or dig up a model in the creation engine, suggesting that Bethesda didn't even bother to do anything with this character beyond sketch up some concept art. What you're really seeing on screen now is just a mod based on that artwork, courtesy of the Capital Wastelands modding team that they've recently released. Specifically, authors The Fried Turkey and HCG Grill. Their recreation of the mutant looks absolutely perfect in my book, and I think had Bethesda implemented it, it would have made the wastelands of Fallout 4 considerably more terrifying. Anyway, enough nightmare fuel. Let's move on. For fourth spot, Cockroaches. Yes, according to various models, textures, and even AI packages found within the game's data, Fallout 4 was going to contain cockroaches at some point in time. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, Nate, doesn't Fallout 4 already have rad roaches? Well, yes, but it appears Bethesda also wanted the game to include tiny, regular sized roaches too. They would have predominantly been found swarming carcasses and other decomposing material, as normal roaches tend to do. The reason Bethesda never followed through and delivered these insects to the wasteland is unclear. The characters are actually fully developed. They have models, textures, as mentioned they've got AI packages too. More than likely, their removal wasn't simply due to incompletion, but the devs just changing their minds, and deciding that there was no place in Boston for these creepy crawlies. Besides, we have rad roaches already. The characters would have behaved similar to the world's birds and seagulls, not being able to attack and simply running away in horror whenever the soul survivor got too close. From what we can tell, there's also not anything that would have spawned in their inventories. Rad roaches of course drop rad roach meat and whatnot, 
but these little guys don't seem to have anything. Maybe they would have had insect guts or something like that, had BGS gotten around to it. But as someone who currently lives in South Texas and is paranoid of these little buggers, I don't particularly mind their absence from the game myself. And finally, last on our list, we have a whole suite of cut projectiles and throwable items. So in Fallout 4, at least in the version we got to see, generally the only things the player is able to throw are various explosives and trap-based devices, like mines and nades and that sort of stuff for instance. However, perfectly finished and ready to go in the game's data is an entire arsenal of various throwable melee weapons such as tomahawks, spears, tossable buzzsaws, and even throwing blades. Easily extractable from the creation kit, though not possible to acquire with just console commands, these objects would have activated pretty much in the same fashion as any other throwable item in its class would. Just hold down the right bumper, L1, or the PC equivalent, and your character would throw away. Some of the cut melee arms actually seem to have constituted some good fun, there's an explosive harpoon, for instance, that I had a tremendous blast playing around with once I got a good restoration mod installed. Unfortunately, I must admit, it does seem kind of apparent why Bethesda never went ahead and implemented any of these. They're riddled with bugs, lack appropriate third-person animations, and are painfully difficult to properly target and direct. The old grenade tossing system they're based on just wasn't designed for precision. So, while it's unfortunate all these models and textures went to waste and simply weren't seen, I can kind of understand why that happened. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five of the most incredible pieces of cut content in, or I suppose not in, that is the whole point of this thing, Fallout 4. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. If you haven't already, please do not forget to hit that like button and maybe even the subscription one too before clicking away. They do wonders for the YouTube algorithm, and my feelings too. Also, what bits and pieces of cut content in Fallout 4, Skyrim, or maybe even Red Dead 2 should I explore next? Leave a comment down below. Huge shout out to patrons and channel members, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out everyone.